Hello, it's Jeffrey Mishlove, and today I'm going to follow up a little bit on yesterday's In Presence monologue in which I talked about the New Thought Movement and the American Transcendentalists. Today I'd like to focus a little bit more on uh, what is popularly known as the power of positive thinking. Now, that phrase was made famous by Reverend Norman Vincent Peale, whose book, The Power of Positive Thinking, has sold millions of copies. And Peale was the uh, reverend, the uh, pastor at the uh, New Collegiate Church in New York City. And it just so happens that to the extent that Donald Trump had any religious upbringing at all, his family, his father, brought him to Norman Vincent Peale's church. And as a, a youngster, he heard many lectures of Norman Vincent Peale. And I think at one point when asked about his religious affiliation, he said, yes, I'm a member of the uh, collegiate church of Norman Vincent Peale, although apparently uh, the church records show that he never was actually an official member. But I think when it comes to looking at both the positive and the negative side of the power of positive thinking, Donald Trump is an interesting case in point. Now, you could say from the negative side, and I know there are Trump supporters amongst the listeners, and so you'll probably disagree with me vehemently about this, but this is my take. I It seems to me that uh, what the power of positive thinking has done in terms of Donald Trump, to the extent that he's absorbed it at all, he seems to have enormous self-confidence. He believes in himself. I think that's fair to say. And his belief in himself has taken him a very long way. But perhaps he believes in himself altogether too much because it seems as if anything that comes out of his mouth at any given moment, he believes it to be true. And yet the fact checkers are telling us that roughly 60, 65 percent of everything he says is either false or misleading. Now, I know misleading is a very nebulous category uh, because people can interpret things in different ways. <laughs> if you're a liberal, lifelong Democrat such as myself, why well, you'd probably tend to interpret anything that comes out of the mouth of a Republican as misleading because it's pointing people in a direction that uh, people such as myself don't think is the right direction for our country. The interesting thing is it works vice versa. I know there are people, people whom I respect, people of high intellect who have the opposite point of view. They're Trump supporters, and they tend to think that anything that comes out of the mouth of a liberal Democrat isn't trustworthy. Well, interesting. But really the most insidious aspect uh, of the power of positive thinking, I think, is to blame other people when they are down and out, saying, well, what's the matter with them? They, they're not thinking positively. They are creating their own reality. They are the ones who are responsible. So if they're coming up from El Salvador because they're trying to escape horrible gang violence, it's their fault. If they're uh, born in uh, what has been referred to as a shithole country, it's their fault. People uh, are to blame for their own circumstances, which means essentially a lack of compassion. And uh, if one studies the traditional Bible, I think it's fair to say a sense of justice, a sense of compassion is called for in uh, traditional religious teachings. And there can be a sense in, in which people involved in the power of positive thinking carry things too far. Or let me put it even more strongly, there is a sense in which if you are harboring neurotic needs, 
such as if you happen to be a uh, narcissistic personality type, you can put your uh, interest in the power of positive thinking in the New Thought movement at the service of your own neurotic needs. And that can happen uh, under all circumstances to people of every political persuasion. It's also one of the great dangers in parapsychology in general. It's why the uh, psychiatrist, Jewel Eisenbud, who wrote the uh, book about and did all the research on Ted Sirios, the fellow uh, Chicago bellhop who had an extraordinary ability to create what were called thoughtographs to impress his mental impressions onto photographic film been uh, highly documented. I know there are skeptics who think the whole thing is phony, but uh, I believe that the uh, proponents of that research, as in most cases involving the proponents of parapsychology and their critics, the proponents are light years ahead in terms of the way they think through the methodological issues and the way they're not wedded to an absolute metaphysical posture that says this has to be fraud, this has to be phony, there's no way it can be real. Well, that's not a good attitude for an empiricist, but I'm drifting off topic because my point is that Jewel Eisenbud wrote a book, another book, called Parapsychology and the Unconscious, and it's and in it, he points to many examples from his own psychotherapy practice of clients, patients of his, who reported psychic experiences, and those experiences didn't end well. They ended up uh, in in ways that that were harmful to the person who had them. And Eisenbud hypothesized and I think it's a, a valid hypothesis, that these are individuals who, because of early childhood trauma, uh, developed self-destructive tendencies. When a, a child experiences trauma, there's a tendency for the child to blame themselves and therefore to want to punish themselves. And this can be a subconscious dynamic carried into adulthood. And Eisenbud warned that for individuals such as this, because as we've reported in other programs, when you have early childhood trauma, you're also likely to develop, in addition to uh, a self-persecution complex, you're likely to develop, to, to develop uh, an awareness of other realities, the potential for psychic experiences. You're, you retreat into the depths of your own psyche, and there you find many things, including various fantasies and the world of mental imagery, but that also opens you up to actual psi, real psychic functioning. But when that real psychic functioning is used in the service of a self-destructive impulse, uh, bad things can happen. Uh, for example, Eisenbud uses this a woman is having an affair. She decides to go to a movie with her lover, and they uh, go to a matinee. They hope they won't be seen, but what should happen? They sit down right in front of friends of the lady's husband. So, uh, she has betrayed herself. Now, one might say, yes, the fact that she had a self-destructive impulse may have also resulted in the affair in the first place. But my point is simply that psychic functioning can come in under the service of a self-destructive unconscious impulse. If one has that in one's psychological makeup, it needs to be worked through. Well, the same thing can be said about the power of positive thinking. In a way, it's very parapsychological to think that if you ha hold positive thoughts, you will create a positive reality. Now, William James, who I've been talking about a lot, suffered from depression most of his life, particularly as a young man before he got married. He learned through the application 
of the power of positive thinking, of the principles of the new thought movement, that he could cure himself of his own depression. It's very real, the things that ca people can accomplish through positive thinking. If you talk to any entrepreneur, they will tell you that they visualize what they did and then they did it. That's usually the way it goes. And some people will visualize and visualize over and over and over again till they work out all of the potential challenges, problems, uh, potholes in the road ahead that they're going to encounter and figure out in advance how they're going to address each and every one of those. Donald Trump has become president of the United States against all odds. The most unpopular president, I think, in the history of American elections. But he is the president of the United States. And he famously said to a reporter who interviewed him shortly after his election about why he plans to do the things he's going to do. He said, look, I'm president and you're not. So there's much to be said for the power of positive thinking <laughs> in terms of getting things accomplished. But if you have unresolved conflicts, a persecution complex, for example, any self-destructive impulses, they may also tend to become the driving force when you enter into the realm of uh, higher consciousness, positive thinking, and psychic functioning, too. I know of uh, many examples of people who have had direct psychic hits, and it led to no good for them. One woman reported to me a case where uh, she was working on the Ouija board. The Ouija board instructed her to show up at a particular street corner at a particular date and time, and uh, she didn't go there, actually. But she did read in the newspaper the next day that a murder took place right then and there. On uh, other occasions, people end up in bad marriages because they have had psychic visions about the person they thought they should marry. It turned out to be a self-destructive impulse at play. So, I guess the message is you really have to clean your own house. You have to work through your own deep issues if you're going to apply parapsychological principles, if, especially if you're planning to work with psychokinesis. But even if you're simply thinking of being a more positive person in your life, being positive is a good thing, but it's not necessarily everything you need to do. And Unfortunately, I suppose for all of us, the, the psychic housework that we have to do in terms of examining our own unconscious mind, well, the unconscious mind is practically infinite. So, the work of cleaning house inside of one's own psyche is, is ongoing, always ongoing. And I'll leave you with that thought. Thank you once again for being with me.